cup hands of plan members identify themselves for the camera. Dorothy Goodwin. Philip Prince. Ray Renner. John Bell. Diane Robbins. Simone Blessinger. Any members on the back of that? All right, we've got the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee draft proposal. Um, let you guys present your points. Okay, we can do that. Um, we spent uh, probably about four meetings producing what you're seeing in front of you. Um, we started by looking at what you folks had proposed with regards to the, uh, um, well, what you had is DB1 and DB2, and I'll explain why it looks different here in a moment. Um, and one of our difficulties was that we're doing this backwards. Under normal circumstances, the comprehensive plan language would have been written first, and then the planning board jumps off of that to do what they need to do in terms of the land use ordinance. Um, the planning board had made a proposal at this point, and we then had to kind of come up with language that maybe reflected what you were aiming at. So if at some point we have done this, um, we're going to have to go back and, and rectify that. But I think with Tad's explanations, we, we I think, are on the same page. Um, the reason for the M1 through 5 is, is not intended as names for these various districts. It was simply for facilitating the discussion. Um, made it a little faster and more efficient. So we're not intending to you know, try to change what you've had as DB1 and DB2, if that's your pleasure. Um, but for the purposes of our functioning, we said, OK, there's really five of these places to look at, and one, two, three, four, five, and just designated them by numbers. Um, if you look at that, that first section, which is sort of an outline of mixed-use districts, uh, it gives you a description of the physical location of each of those five districts. Um, and then a, a generic statement about what a mixed-use district is. Um, and for the purposes of the record, I'll just read that. Each mixed-use district is intended to accommodate a blend of business, residential, and community uses, although the standards will differ, um, differ I'm sorry, among the five mixed-use districts. Current and historical uses along with site conditions will dictate the nature and scope of uses permitted in each mixed-use district. And then we are, we are looking for a sentence that indicates that existing businesses, as of the date of whenever this is passed, will continue to do whatever they do. Um, Tad said he had some language to put in that spot, but he has not as yet forwarded that to us. So that will go there. Um, the rationale that we had for the five districts as distinct areas is both geographical and use-oriented. Um, each district is, is kind of a neighborhood in and of itself. And each neighborhood, in turn, has its own character. So although if you, you know, mapped it out on a grid, you might find that 98% you know, of everything is common amongst them. And it's those little things that are going to make each one perhaps a little bit different in terms of the overall plan. Um, and I think as you look at the language, you'll, you'll see that reflected. Um, M1 and M2, we stuck as close as possible uh, to what was in the proposal that you had put forth as a planning board. And then we just went nuts and did M3, M4, M5. Um, at this point, uh, I guess it would make sense to take a look at them one by one. And if you, you know, at any point you have questions or comments, throw them our way and we'll do our best to uh, answer them or what you need to explain. Yes, sir. This is the, the mixed use district that tells me roughly where it's going to be. For example, M1, at the southern end of the Route 1 corridor. Where does it stop? Where, where's the northern part of that boundary? Or the eastern or the western part of that boundary? It, I, I cannot tell you from looking at this where these areas are. That's true. Okay. Good, then I'm not confused. No, you're not. No. And that, that, that initial section is, is really just, that, that was our starting point. Um, we, that M1 district is what you folks had said would be DB1. Okay. So the boundaries that you set were what we were working with okay. in terms of our discussion. Um, that hasn't, that, we did not make any recommendation about a change in that. But it's not reflected here because what we're trying to do is have a comprehensive plan, comprehensive plan, fairly simple and straightforward, but the 
planning board do the detail work? Primarily just the geographical data, looking at the map. Um, in a couple of cases, particularly M2, we're going to jump around a little bit, I suspect. Uh, if you look under uses for M2, the very last sentence uh, says that owners of existing lots of record shall have the right to build one single to build one single family dwelling, and that was a lengthy discussion that we had based upon the fact that if we were going to suddenly go into this M2 district where there were X number of existing landowners and say to them, okay, from this date forward, you can't put up a dwelling that doesn't have a business associated with it, that that was a serious infringement on their property rights. So, therefore, that sentence is what we're proposing for the comprehensive plan. Uh, it still encourages businesses to be associated with the dwellings, but you're not going to take somebody who bought a piece of property 20 years ago as their retirement property and then suddenly finds out that in addition to their retirement home, they have to open a shoe store. Um, that's that he's regarded that as unfair. So that kind of consideration was taken into account in terms of looking at the map and saying, what do we have here in terms of land space? We do have some hopes of having some opportunity to research the actual landowners. So again, ex-landowners, have them all come in, and if every one of them said, no, I have no intention of ever just using it as a place for a house, I'd love to be able to have a business, then maybe that sentence could come out. But if there's just one person who has that need, then that sentence would have to stay there. If you remember, uh, probably about a year ago, um, the Economic Development Committee, on behalf of the planning board, did hold a meeting where we had quite a bit of attendance from people in the townhouse corner district. Uh, so, so we have talked, or at least the, the Economic Development Committee has talked to them, and we really have no serious uh, objections. You know, yeah, obviously, as you know, this progresses and there are public hearings, um, the usual discussion will ensue and someone may come along and say this is unacceptable to me in this neighborhood. And that, that was that's part of why we're looking at this as neighborhoods. Um, because we, we have people who well, may be new to that area, but we also have families that may have lived there for decades and generations. And as as a a group of other townspeople um, I don't know if it's appropriate for us to go into any area and suddenly say, okay, we've decided that your land would be better used as this. Again, if you put yourself in the position of that landowner, you wouldn't want it done to you. So a lot of public input and feedback has to happen. So you're primarily basing the districts on current use? Current, current use and geography, yes. I have a question uh, before we get into the details of the big picture. These pretty much mirror what we've been already right. discussing and working on. I just want to make sure that that, um, like you said before, usually it's the comprehensive thing comes first. I want to make sure we don't have like tail wagging the dog, that this is something that, that you would have um, probably come up with without hearing what we had done. So, um, or did, 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 are, is this something that you're just filling in um, because we've already started the work? I think it's a mix. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good word. I know. some of the work had to happen. Yeah. And, and, and as John just pointed out, this is all, particularly for M1 and M2, this is kind of what's there. Uh, M2 being just an extension, well, I take that back, not M2 so much. M1 is what's there because it's the Route 1 corridor. Um, your suggestion of expanding that into the back <coughs> and making that more mixed use, I think that made sense to us. But again, we want to talk to those X number of landowners. Does it make sense to them? Mm -hmm. um, I think we could ask uh, Todd to contact all of them so that we could sit down and have a meeting with them as well. Yeah, well, we, we had been informed in that discussion. And, and, yeah, that 
that's that's something that the, both committees I think should sit down with those landowners and see how they feel. If they if they blow it out of if they blow it out of the water in, in a, a, a group like this, there's no point in taking that to town meeting because it's going to get blown out of the water there. It's not a good idea. No, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I kind of think if you own the land, what is not a good idea is when somebody tells you to do something you don't want to do. But that's just me. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, that part is. Um. You got questions? Yes, sir. What are your feelings on Turner and your M1 to actually have the residential use in there? Well, let's look as at the, the, As the cop plant. I mean, uh, related to a business, yes. But, uh, actually, for residential dwelling, since this is going to be a business district, what is the comprehensive plan feeling on? I don't think it's a good idea. That's, that's why I'm throwing it. It's already there. Yes, uh, existing there, but right. to create new, this is where I'm going at. Yeah, and, and I understand your question, and, and I think I, I, I would fall back on both agreement with the two of you that it doesn't necessarily belong there, but by the same token, if you have landowners there and that's their intent, I don't know that it's reasonable to restrict that. And, and realistically, when you look at the corridor, and again, this, this may be one of those things that requires a lot more um, detailed study, and again, I go back to the idea of the neighborhood than we've ever done before. Um, look at you know what is there now, who owns the property, and what's their, their intention for that property. You might find, again, X number of landowners who currently have land on which you could put a residence who would say, I'd be crazy to build a house here. I could make a lot more money putting up a business. Well, I know when, when we looked at that particular issue, we said, look at a grandfather. Whatever you've got right there, not, not going to be affected by anything that we do. It's going to stay exactly right. the If you want to sell it, that's a whole other issue. But in, in the way it's set up right now, we have no intention of changing it. Well, that's pretty much the view that we took on this, yeah. which I'm saying I don't think it's a good idea. That's my own personal view, but as far as the committee goes, I don't think the committee as a whole is in any way inclined to stop anybody who presently owns land down there from building if that's what they have a desire to build. Unless right. they want to put something. Sort of in this right. specific yeah. Well, one of the, the difficulties that, that a lot of us have seen with the, the comprehensive plan as it exists now in terms of, of, of where the various districts are is there, there, I, I don't want to use the word random, but it's a sure, sure as a temptation. Um, they're, they're much too bright. It was easy to take, okay, at this point A, this point B, let's draw a line, there's a boundary. And I know you guys have run into that problem in terms of um, district lines cutting through properties. And you know, you've got uh, this half of your property is R1, and then all of a sudden you're in R4. What do we do? So you have, as I understand it, taken the, the bull by the boards and said, all right, let's follow property lines. Well, the other piece of the puzzle is this, this broad rush approach to saying, okay, this looks like a good place for our whatever or whatever business district may not be the way to go. Um, we are a town of neighborhoods in many respects. And if we look at zoning from a neighborhood standpoint, perhaps what we did in those areas would make a lot more sense to the people who currently live there and would be less intrusive and also give the town a better product in terms of the potential for that land. And, and I think that's that's kind of what we have been aiming at in terms of some of these descriptions. But <laughs> Yes. Okay. You still, is your ideas of that, boundaries or anything else, you're still splitting up properties for your zones. How's that one? You got to turn out if you're in your M1 zone and you go back 200 feet and a property is 600 feet. The M1 zone doesn't go back specifically 200 feet the way you guys proposed it. It was proposed to go along the property lines. Yeah. But then again, that's not the comprehensive plan's decision. Is to, we're not setting the boundaries. We're saying 
for this zone and then that zone, and then you have to do the details as far as the, the land use ordinance. We don't set the boundaries. We set, like, bubbles. You know, this is about where this is going to be, and this is about where this is going to be. And, you know, the descriptions are done in the land use ordinance, not in the comp plan. Yeah, and that, that is the power of the That is the planning board function is to actually. Right. Yes, I saw him. Okay. Is to actually uh, draw the land use map and decide where the boundaries are going to be and so forth. But you what talk about. Yeah. You talk about uh, neighborhoods and, and the problem, the conflict really comes in in the, uh, the competition between business and residential. It's easy enough to talk about neighborhoods if you've got residential neighborhoods. That's, that's no problem. But when you start mixing in business and the conflict between business and neighborhood, that's where you get the problem. Hence, in the, the proposed M1 district, if I get that right, which is Route 1, yeah. B1. Um, you know, do we want residences in there? Don't we want residences in there? There's, a, there's an obvious conflict in those two uses, and that's the hard part to resolve. So what is it that you do with business? Some towns say, okay, this is strictly business, this is strictly residential. Sounds like comprehensive plan was mixed use. Now, how do you rationalize and how do you make that an amicable type of situation? That's, that's a problem we as a planning board run into often. We have to make sure that the businesses are compatible with residents and in turn the residences are compatible with the business if there's more business in that district. So it's easy enough to say mixed use, but when it comes down to the details, it's sometimes <coughs> pretty tricky. Lloyd, you got a comment? Yes, I have a question here, Donna. Don, the family subdivision, if a person has a lot of land and uses kids in some land, what happened on that uh, M21 district? But no, no subdivision. <laughs> uh, the, well, there's no subdivision. So a man cannot give his kid a house, a piece of land, to build it? Not after the date that this would be enacted. Okay. As far as our understanding okay. is right now. Okay. Remember, this, remember, we're first draft here. Yeah, okay. I'm just, you know. Yeah, but no, that, that's, that's the intent. Because the idea is to take the, 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 the business district from Route 1 and start pushing it back. Yeah. So we have more depth, right. um, giving more opportunity for businesses to, mm -hmm. to get in. However, the, the, the corresponding intent is that on that piece of land, you have business owners who may also have a residence attached to mm -hmm. or associated with that business. Right. So you still have a, a, a community sense of you know, people and businesses mixed together, or residences and businesses. Okay. So it should be, I think it should be also specified in no kind of subdivision. Well, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Families and yeah. But I just add a little light to that is there was extensive discussion about the idea of the owner of of the lot of record as of the adoption of the new comprehensive plan in order to address the issue that if let's say owner X owns 15 acres in the DB1 district. He would like to build a house on his parcel and subdivide the land for business use. That would be something that would be acceptable, yes. I believe, was the consensus of that. But further than that, I, I, the comp plan did struggle quite a bit with the fact that if you want to just complete, express, expressly prohibit business in deep, uh, residential and DB1, you're creating a hardship for many of the residents who may be sitting on that land just for that reason. Um, so that's where that, that long well, conversation actually that, about that discussion was, That discussion was more on DB2 than DB1, but I think the same argument can be made. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why, and it sounds like you guys wrestled with the same thing we did, and that's why we do want to talk with all of the people, and it's our understanding by looking at the maps and the lots <coughs> there's not a lot. No, six, or eight not. six or eight folks eight. that we might right. want to talk to in the DB1. Uh, fewer, I think, almost in the back. And what we've heard so far from folks is it has been pretty positive. My reading of this is 
this is really consistent, M1 and M2 is really consistent as, as a draft and as a concept of what the comprehensive plan is saying would be good as well as what the board has come up with in both DB1 and DB2. Yep. The only point of contention that I've made, and I made contention is the wrong word, but as John mentioned, this idea of mixed use and we had gone through planned mixed use developments um, and we kind of moved that off to the side as a board. Um, however, um, within the comprehensive plan writing, the, the building of both businesses and residentials as a total unit doesn't say plan mixed use development, but that's what those are. Right. So we're, we're back to a discussion we had earlier, I'm afraid. Well, I, I don't think they address planned mixed use. That's different than just mixed use. But that isn't an option that the board has considered, and it is a possibility. Really? In your right. But where you specifically say, well, we're going to have mixed use, but we have to have it set up in certain ways and certain conditions and you know have it all planned out rather than random and organic. Uh, yeah, this gets down to the writing of all those standards. That's right. 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 But we, well, we thought that's that we had our wrestled with we thought that would add another uh, fifty pages to the ordinance yeah, we didn't think would be appropriate. About forty nine two minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I like we, now? We, 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 yeah. we did address that in M two. Uh, if you look at their uses, uh, unless, I'm, unless I'm misunderstanding you, which is entirely possible here, uh, residential uses, both single and multifamily, that are part of a mixed use project will be permitted. So that's the, the if I understand it right, the planned mixed use piece. It could be, yeah. Um, yeah that, that's what the intent is there. Uh, the, the other thing, and, and I, I keep wanting to come back to the word neighborhood, we are, we are a rural community and a small town. And, and I see from what you folks wrote that you, you were trying on Route 1 you know, to, to kind of keep that small town feel um, so that we don't look like uh, you know, a strip mall in downtown New Jersey. Having residences mixed in, to my way of thinking, creates that to some extent, as opposed to here's a business A, B, C, D, E, and then you're out, out of town. Having, having some homes in there, you know, lawn space, an occasional swing with a kid on it, um, kind of makes somebody feel as though maybe they're coming into a small town. Now, that's not to say that we want to encourage that kind of development there, because we have a limited commercial area. Exactly. But if it happens, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing in terms of the, the overall vision. Yeah, it does. I think everybody's split on that. I agree with you. With that. It does create a conflict between the business community and the residential community when you're doing that. You've got a residential dwelling here, and you've got a business that's going to be right next door creating a lot of noise, or an acceptable amount of noise and traffic. That resident's going to be complaining, how did this happen? And we're not restricting anyone no more than, than you're restricting businesses from being in a residential area. You're managing it. Yeah, I, I like to pipe in there. I agree with what you said, Donna. I, I think it's a good idea. They're just they're, that I'm not opposed to whatever we come up with, but I would rather see some mixture because it makes a downtown more viable. Otherwise, it's it's just strip mall, right? and to have a little bit of mix of people walking, you have people it's uh, there in the evening rather than close up at six and, and all dark at night. So it, I think it creates it keeps it as a neighborhood rather than just uh, a business district. Yeah, well, you, but what you were going for was a pedestrian-friendly yeah. place, yeah. Um, not necessarily with huge businesses, but with smaller shops. Uh, you you kind of have to have people living there to do that. Um, and and I, I also I understand the con the conflict of of business and residential next to each other, but they don't have to be incompatible. And it, it's also the was there first. Okay, so if, 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 I, if I buy a home next to a business, 
then I know what I'm buying and I know what I'm next to, or at least I should. And if I, you know, I wake up one more, it's like somebody who buys a house next to a cow barn and suddenly discovers that manure exists and, and complains about it. It's like, it well, happens. I know, but. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, <laughs> so, let the buyer beware, I think, is, is, uh, is part of the solution. I don't, I don't know that we as a community can ever come up with anything that's going to make 100% of the people happy 100% of the time. Yes, but that's what we have with these flatlanders. But some of, the, some of the businesses that we're encouraging may not be all that, that much of a problem. But it, I think we might be thinking of, of, uh, of a wood shop or a factory with someone living next door, uh, but what about professional officers, or dentist, or, or um, you know, a social worker, or whatever? Ice cream shop. Yeah. Ice cream shop. <laughs> how much, how much for all the stuff? Well, we had put something in there that said that as long as the residence was ancillary to the business, right. it was allowed. Yes. The, it is a business That's zone, important. but if you want to put a residence on your lot, First off, we had said it can't be larger than the business. So you can't have a, a, a 15,000 square foot house next to a 5,000 square foot business. It's just not going to happen. Just a, it, has, it, it can't be any bigger than but the why business. Not? Because we wanted it to primarily be a business district. Part of, part of the argument that I think we kind of lost is that the amount of space available for business is at a premium. So we're looking to maximize the return on that space, therefore minimize residential. That was part of the argument there, to maximize the tax uh, receipts from the business district. And, and we, we did understand that. I, I guess, and, and again, we're not trying to encourage residential in the comprehensive plan. It was simply allowing for <coughs> um, but putting more emphasis, I, I, I was just looking while you were talking to see the language that you had given us that we worked with. M2, it was very clear that you wanted the home and business combination to be such that the business was primary. It was not as clear in, in DB1, DB1 or M1. Now maybe that's me. DB1. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was DB1. There was no residents in DB1 at all. Well, uh, that's I thought that was, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, there you go. That's not what I understand. I thought that D, DB2 we were going to restrict residents. Right. But DB1, right? DB1 will be mixed. Why am I not seeing it? I thought, I thought we had said yes in the DB1, as long as it's ancillary to the business. You've, yeah. got, you've got to have a business there in order to have a residence. Security. Right. Right. And we're also are allowing a second floor right. residential and second floor. First floor is probably where the business is going, but up, up above whatever they want to put up there. I think residents might be more likely to work in the second floor than in the business on the second floor. If I might, <laughs> every time we talk about the business district, everyone starts to say about strip malls. But I think it's the ordinance is written well enough that there wouldn't be a strict law for the businesses that came there. I mean, it seemed to me, at least in some of the conversations we had, that they would be smaller businesses. You're and talking DB1. In D, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, yeah. M1, DB1. It, it's a okay. Which is where you want to have the businesses established. It doesn't necessarily have to be a strict law, and it's like that's the extreme. Uh, it seems to me if you define it in your ordinances and the sizes of buildings and how they have to be built, then that won't happen. You won't have a strip mall. I mean, lots of towns have business districts that don't look like strip malls. Okay. I mean, I mean, I've walked through them. I'm sure you've walked through Okay. One question probably a lot of you don't realize anything else actually look at the size of the properties that are on Route 1. Okay? If you look at the size of the properties, you can't put a strip mall there. Okay? So that get the facts straight that you can't turn out the property is too small to put a strip mall, 
So why are we even talking about strip malls? I, I, I'm just I, using I, that no. as an example. I didn't, I didn't okay. use the term strip mall as a I'm just, literal term. I'm just business after business after business with no residences creates a different atmosphere than <coughs> people living in the neighborhood in which those businesses exist. So I, I will respectfully withdraw the term strip mall because it's probably not a good one to use. However, I did in the course of this discover we do have that in M1, the appropriate sentence. Under uses, second sentence, residential uses, both single and multifamily, that are part of a mixed-use project, will be permitted. Right. So we did accurately reflect what you wanted. So that's in both of those. So I take it we're in agreement on M1 and uh, M2? <laughs> no, we were a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was always a detail. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And, and I think we have many of these business districts today that allow the current residential uses that are there. And I think what we were trying to do was to not take away property owners' rights if they wished to remain there. In some areas, just like you did, we restricted how much that can grow. But I have to, after having been through several of these comprehensive plans, as I know that some of you have been, um, if, you, if it looks like you're going to take away property owner rights, then you run into another whole issue with those property owners. And even though the plan in itself is a good plan, it only takes a few of them to make the rest of the people understand that Okay, if they do it there, they can do it someplace else. Ideally, I would hope that in some of these areas, as they become more business built up, that some of these residential lots may decide that it is beneficial for them to sell it to a business, and thus it would take care of that issue on its own. But as someone who hates having property owners quite stomped on, um, I wasn't willing to sit on a committee and do it, especially if you were going to increase a zone. So if you were going to increase a zone or make a new zone, I didn't want to make it so that if someone had bought a piece of property and wanted to build a house down the road, that they couldn't do it. So that's why some of this has that language in it. I think in I think in the years to come it will probably all kind of even out because I think as if we become as we want to be and we attract more business, then I think we'll see some of those smaller residential lots sell off to a business. But they'll do it of their own accord, not because they had to. And that's what I'm trying to avoid is that have to or not be able to. And and I think you'll find that when we have, we've had this discussion and we've all agreed, we're not changing. What, it, what you're doing with your property right now is what you're that's, doing. We don't that's, want to that's change goal. it. Right. Yeah, there's never that intent. Well, I, I think our concern was not an existing residence that we being told you can't live there anymore, um, but somebody who had an empty lot. And then this was mostly in the M M2 or the DB2 district. If you had an empty lot, and as I said before, the example was, you know, I bought it 20 years ago, it's going to be my retirement home, and now all of a sudden you're telling me I can't do that without having a business. That that would be an infringement on their rights. Um, so that for that, that maybe one landowner in that whole district who said, I just want to build a house here, that we should not be in a position to say, no, you can't. Well, I think you're right, uh, and also the fact that when that landowner realizes that it is a business district, he may be looking for a better value for his property. We or that as well. or realize that building a house here mm -hmm. may have a UPS store next door to me that I'm not too excited about. Um, right, or maybe I can sell my 20 acres for five times its value right, now exactly. and, and buy 50 right. acres someplace else where I just have a residence next to me. Yeah. All, all I wanted to comment on is that I think there was some misunderstanding because residents and single family residents were being used interchangeably. So there was a, you know, a single family residence being a standalone home stand stand by alone. itself. <coughs> I'm sorry, that's all I wanted to clarify. I thought I heard some.
scoop thing on that one. Everybody agrees to the same thing that we all you know, that it's their property, they should be allowed to build their own home if they want. So we don't want to take that away. Just, I'm wondering what, uh, how much more will we allow? Is it restricting uh, residential be beyond that? Or, or are we going to allow something? Think of the DB2 or the M2. I think it, it, there's none there. It probably doesn't belong because it would be more industrial. And I think that would be uh, they, that would be more clashing. We took out the subdivision. The subdivision, right. okay. So, but on the M1, DB1, I think I'm still not hearing, at least I'm not hearing everybody agree with me on that. But, uh, um, I think there should be some, but so I'm not sure which way to go on that. But well, I, I, I think in both cases we've said pretty much the same thing that you know if you have a piece of property with a, a current single family dwelling on it, no problem. If you have a piece of property and you want to build a single family dwelling, no problem. But there's no subdivisions allowed in either one because we, we don't want to turn the area maybe, into maybe a residential. Maybe I'm looking at a piece maybe it's a little different. Not subdivision, not single. Yeah like a multi-family apartment building or just condos, condos above above the uh, offices down below. I don't see a problem with that. No, I think and that's fine. That okay, my excuse. I think that that's was part of this. Uh, question for you. Comprehensive plan generally gives the idea and goals or sets precedent. Now, and I've been for years running my mouth, okay? And everybody's talking about downtown business, this, that, and everything else. What is the comprehensive plan have ideas of encouraging and doing something for businesses instead of the businesses doing something for Route 1? Well, one of my primary things is, besides having the idea of maybe sidewalks or whatever else not, Route 1's a black hole, okay? And the only thing that turns on lights Route 1 up is, maybe is your businesses. And it's kind of hard to have a downtown, or whatever you want to call it, in a black hole. So what precedence does the comprehensive plan have for ideas of enlightening it? I don't have an answer to that because we haven't gotten that far. No, I'm just and, throwing. And, I'm throwing this out. I have, I have, <clears throat> as a business owner. Okay. I understand your question and I understand your comment. However, the other thing, you, what you're talking about, basically, is infrastructure. Um, and the question is, who's going to provide the infrastructure? Is the town going to provide the infrastructure? Or are the businesses going to provide the infrastructure? Or is it going to be a combination as businesses come in? We've been told as businesses, if you want it, you pay for it. Well, I mean, I mean, we're lucky this year, okay, for infrastructure and everything else. We were lucky this year, we actually got water pressure on the roof. One. This is a good step. First time in how many years? But I'm saying is if you want to have goals or help in a business, you gotta put guidelines down. Well, I think to a certain extent if you look at the development standards that are like under M1, which is part of the things that we the feedback we got from the planning board is that you're saying pedestrian friendly atmosphere would be an integral part of the approach to development. Well, the minute you put pedestrian friendly, you're going to have to light it, whether you do it as little shopping clusters or residential shopping mixes, you're going to provide lighting if you're doing it pedestrian friendly because you're not going to have it, you know. So I think that's kind of like what you're leaning as the planning board and that we got that impression. In, in the development standards that you're going to put in. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the comprehensive plan is, is, as you said, it's goals and guidelines. Not details. Yeah. So we can say things like pedestrian friendly atmosphere, site conditions and infrastructure will determine the maximum density development, 
it's up to the planning board, to some extent, to say that when businesses go in, they have to provide a certain amount of lighting for their customers. There's all sorts of... You're, what you're looking, I think, is for incentive for businesses to come to town. Let a business be... A have a run will be proud of what we have. Show it, at least. Instead of turning and leaving it a black hole. I agree with you, Marty, but we haven't got that far yet. Yeah. I know. I'm I, throwing I, my I two cents with you. I agree with you completely. I think some lights down Route 1 and Route 1 is but the, but the, the, the issue of lights on Route 1 or sewer on Route 1 or anything else is either up to the business community or up to the Board of Selectmen as, as the, the town organization to actually say we're going to do that. We as a planning board can say it's a great idea, but we don't have the authority to go through and say do that. Right. You guys don't have the authority. That's the selectmen and the selectmen alone. Right. It's, it's either the businesses or the town. The town's going to put up money or the businesses yeah. or mm -hmm. a combination thereof. And that, that's an agreement that has to be reached. And that's where yeah. you get into your TIF districts and stuff like yep. that yep. that the planning board is working on. So I, 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 I might provide well, some What we're basically saying is yes, we're going to provide the written structure as opposed to infrastructure to encourage businesses to be here. But then the next step is to get the businesses to come. That's not any but we can write that down. Put it right in here. Businesses should come here. <laughs> it's not gonna make it happen. Is it Westbrook that has and some I, leftover street lights? I, 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 I think along with that is that in, in order to be able to support infrastructure <coughs> and as as a comp plan, we can say we want the town to put sewer wherever, or we want the town to put water wherever. But that's just in the plan. You, you still have to get, number one, you have to have a town in a financial situation where they can, one, afford to be able to do that. And you need to be able to get the voters to actually vote on it. Because we can write it in here all we want. We can send it to Todd. The selectmen can say they want it all, all they want. But if you send it to vote at the same time that you're being whacked with a giant tax increase for other things within town, the chances are you're not going to get those things voted on. Dollars of the executioner of the plan. Mm -hmm. Five seconds. Uh, so other, so uh, we can we can put it in here, Monty, that we would like to see those things supported, but we don't, as a committee, have the right to tell anybody you have to take it to town meeting. We don't get to dictate this is how you do it, where you do it. None of those things. That, that's not within the power of the comprehensive plan. We're we're only giving you what we would like to see happen. We don't execute this. It's, it's not within our power to execute it. I realize that, but we've, in former plans and everything else, we have talked about it, but we never put anything in. Businesses do not put kids in the school system, and the businesses are not receiving anything for non putting kids in the system. I mean, but but, and I realize that, Marty, but if you if you go to other places that have big businesses, you go to Portland. Where they're Portland, not? Portland has to do their own, and not only do they have to do their own, they have to shovel their own sidewalks, they're responsible for their most of their own lighting. So it's, you know, you're asking a little tiny town to do things that even areas that have large developments don't do. Mm -hmm. Well, we're yeah. not trying to be a kenning buck, we're not trying to be a kenning buck with a landing strip. To try to to try to move this on and stay a little bit okay, on schedule, I, I, no, I'm gonna just try to okay. sum up because there's a lot of pieces that were said, a lot of pieces that weren't, and Marty's aware, and he's probably been the champion for uh, lighting along that route one for as long as I have known him, and and I commend him for that. But he's he he, he knows the answer, I think. The townspeople voted $35,000 to have a study done to see what businesses could be attracted here. The town established an economic development committee. The uh, board has worked diligently, rather than wait for the results of the plan, as has the economic development 
okay, because part of the language and some of the other areas they looked at. In the end, we would hope, and the board has taken the position openly on the thing that we're in favor of all of those things, as far as the lighting, some of the TIF district ideas that has to come in, and of course there, have, there has to be that funding. Uh, the recommendations that came from the community in our meetings and in the C groups, uh, specifically for uh, the townhouse corner and that development, the comprehensive plan, and as you said, this is, this is the broad stroke. The recommendations from that plan and why things are out of sync a little bit, because if we waited for the results of those tests and we, we took an active position to say, we're going to try to move along, we we're hoping to be done, and have all of this in at the last review, now we're going to be lucky to get it in for the next town meeting. But I think both the economic, I, the personal feeling, the Economic Development Committee, from what I've gathered, uh, the board, most of the folks, even in your discussion, several of the selectmen that have attended meetings, made comments, understand that there is going to have to be some sort of expenditure. What's not known is where is the best to put what funds may be available and what funds are really going to be available. So until that data is in, we're in this 10-year discussion of trying to get it, but I think there's a lot of committees looking at the issue right now, and the recommendation, those people that we elect for the town have to consider what everybody says, I think. So Marty, if we can, let's try to... Yeah, I, I'd like very much to uh, talk a bit about uh, three, four, and five. We've been concentrating on one and two. Feeling for uh, the uh, of plans concepts for three, four, and five. Um, M3, which we have kind of called the Gateway District, uh, Tad actually brought this up and he said, you know, this, this place exists, maybe we should take a look at it. And it's basically a very small area at the northern end of Route 1, um, which, which is already. Again, mixed use, but primarily business, even though it's very, very small. Um, and what we did, we kind of just took the same language and, and reworked it just a little bit. As I said before, all five of these are very, very similar with little, little tweaking done to each one to represent what it's got going for at the moment. Um, so, again, mixed use, accommodating residential business and community uses, um, permit small to medium scale retail, office, service, and community uses as well as single and multi-family dwellings, new subdivisions be excluded. Um, so the idea here, and the name sort of applies it, is if you're coming south on Route 1 from Biddeford, um, you get into a rundle and you don't know you're there. Uh, <laughs> and it would be nice to A, know you're in a rundle, and B, have it be attractive. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that, that would be the, the goal for this one. Um, that's pretty much very geared up. Very small lot sizes, limited setbacks, um, so that it looks like you know a small enclave of something attractive going on. <coughs> so that, that one's a fairly simple one. Uh, not not the same level or uh, intensity of development as in DB1, but similar in, in some respects. So, any comments or questions on that one? I think we're in the same place with that. Yeah, M3 and yeah. yeah. So can I ask a question? Why limit that area to just the very northernmost section of it? Why not bring it all the way down to where it would meet the DB1? Uh, as far as I understand that, because we've got the VI district in the middle. Okay. Which is the big industrial. Right, right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. And it, uh, that's really not conducive to this kind of use. Okay, uh, M4, Townhouse Corner District, um, we 
over at Rumble Road, Lodge Avenue, the Senate Road, and the Steps. And th this is this is a this is a historical neighborhood. I can call Townhouse Corner District for a long, long time. Um, there, it is it is currently a mixed use district. It has been. Um, you get more from Marty. Uh, there are businesses and residences mixed. It's a relatively small district. Um, permit small scale retail office service and community uses, same deals, little single family, multi family dwellings, mixed use projects will also be permitted. So try to encourage some of those same things. If a business comes in, uh, have associated with a residence perhaps above it, that type of thing. Um, new construction shall be designed to reflect the character of the surrounding residential neighborhoods, minimum lot size, one acre. But so, in this case, you would allow single family subdivisions? Um, we, we did not prohibit that. Um, let's, that one, we, we haven't looked at as closely as we might, because it kind of had been looked at. Uh, I think that's one that our group would like to revisit again and, and really look at the maps and, and see what's there a little more. Uh, we, we did identify the fact that there are you know, again, several landowners, all of whom, from what I've gathered, are pretty agreeable to, to some of the plans that have been on the books. Um, but again, relatively small area with uh, you know, neighborhood store kind of atmosphere. I think one of the reasons that subdivisions didn't get looked at very closely is, I, I, if I remember right, most of the lots down in that small area that we looked at are fairly small lots. I don't know that there's anything down there that would really lend itself to a subdivision. Well, as Marty is fond of saying, he, he wants to look at the crystal ball and how do we know that at some point in the future somebody doesn't buy up 15 of those lots. Yeah. <laughs> Marty's got a pretty big crystal ball. He does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he usually goes blind. If they do, they're probably not going to build a house on it. They're probably well, going to put a business on it. <laughs> However, let, let's, let's look at the word probably. You know, it, it is improbable that that would happen, but is it impossible? No. So do we want to put in that prohibition for our subdivisions? Well, I think what I, if, if I could at this joint, rather than, I think what you've done and the work you've done is excellent. And I think if you keep this in that context of, of scope, we, the next step is to have the people from these various areas come in, discuss, let's let them tell us. Are they allowed to today, Tom? Subdivisions in that? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think there's yeah. 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 lots that are subdividable. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, 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 four, I think, yeah, I think the, the point is that they're all small to begin with, so somebody would have to buy up several to, to do that. Well, I'll, I'll put that down as a question mark. For, for yeah, that's what I did. It's just going down for just I looked at it. In, in all of the other districts, you have that comment. There's no single family subdivisions. This was the only one that doesn't have it. Because actually, turn out on that section you're speaking down there, per se, the largest lot, depending on how far you're coming down Long Cabin Road, there's only one piece of property that is basically larger than an acre. Okay, it's just one. Yeah, and that was four five. Yeah, I mean that's the only one that is larger than that you could split up. Well, but depending on how far you come down, you're saying there's there. only one property in that whole area that's larger than one acre. And generally you're speaking, and you're yes. setting a minimum lot size of one acre. Oh, good point. Yeah. Well, I mean that's all we need to look at. The, the question there, though, is 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 will the, the the land support buildings on less than an acre? Is that sewer? Oh, well, yeah, I would have to think that they have to they have to be bigger than one acre lots. That's what R three or R four down there. Well, it would be well, changing. It would be changing to. Oh no, I mean I think right now yeah, it's so going to be three or four acres size to start with. Acre. Yeah. Well, not necessarily, because again, right. I, I resisted more. using the word yeah. random. No, but what well, he's saying is only one, there's only one lot above one, 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 one acre. Uh, I mean, I don't know that that's an exact thing, but yeah. I don't, I, I the, don't know that there's any large lots down there, yeah. but I don't know that they're less than an acre. It could be, no, I take it. See, it's the lot. 
But if a law can assist, but if a law, whatever it is, is a sustainable small business, whatever it is, which is um, with standard septic, you know that it's factor two foot is not fine. Let them have it on their property. Well, we, it shouldn't be. We know how it became awkward in our floor. It was because. The, the crayon approach to zoning. Oh, okay. well, let's draw a line here. Yeah. And then this, this one little neighborhood was included in that section. So if, if you look, look out from there, everything gets bigger. But that's, again, the, the more, I, I'll speak just for myself personally, the more I look at this, the more the word neighborhood made sense. Mm -hmm. That's a neighborhood. It has been forever. Yeah. So why mess with that? Let's take advantage of it. Oh, I, I agree with you. I, yeah. just, I, I was just but, thinking it's, if it's an R3 or an R4 district and there's nothing but R1 uh, single acre houses in there, how do they ever get that one? Yeah, yeah, just a crayon. Yeah. Yeah. And same, 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 crayon same thing with, with the north end of Route 1. It, it just got lumped into B&I and it really it doesn't have any live zones. So it doesn't, doesn't fit requirements. Yeah, anymore. if you look right. at uh, now, that's that road on the other side of the turnpike. Proctor Road. Proctor Road. If you look yeah. at Proctor Road, it's nothing but single family houses there. So. And under under M5, you have almost the perfect thing for M4, I think. Um, you've got new construction shall be designed to reflect the character of the surrounding residential, but for M4, it's residential and business that's in the area. And then with significant reduction of the sizes for both the frontages and the setbacks, al allowing the maximum use of whatever the land size is that they've got. We have within our ordinances um, lots of, too many rules sometimes, um, but uh, if, they, if they can get in a business, get in a house, get in a, a thing that meets all of the setback requirements and the siting for a second, whatever they need, uh, why not let them use it? Which, 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 what are you talking about? I'm still four. talking for. Okay. Are, you, are you suggesting taking the first sentence from development standards for five oh, yeah. and putting that in four? Cool. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a thought, in the discussion, when we meet with the folks or talk to the, the other folks that help draft up some of the wording <laughs> for kind of comments, the bombs, and, and that kind of stuff. So I think that was their original intent. And I think even the last sentence. On a site yep. I think the whole paragraph. Yes. I mean, it's excellent. It's excellent. I, and I, I think, think it applies. I say if you look at the other M1s, M2, and we don't specify the lot sizes, so maybe we shouldn't be specifying the lot sizes in M4 and just, like you say, add that sentence that says whatever can be supported or. or you know, for, you know, there's a lot of uh, support. So take the, take the whole paragraph. I think, and apply it to M4 uh, as well as M5? If I could just say, before I think you do that, you're going to have a major problem. Because when we talk to the people from the townhouse called the district, they were quite amenable to having businesses mixed in with their houses. Mm -hmm. You start putting in this paragraph that you want to, uh, Oh, the development standards. I yes. thought we were no, putting no, this no, one no, in no, with the uh, no, no, large. Okay. Sorry. I, I, oh. If Sorry. I may, but I think, <laughs> and knowing the area fairly well with discussions of the EDC, that, that one acre minimum lot size in the M4 is going to create a lot more non conforming lots right. if the planning board is to move forward with that recommendation. Yeah. Uh, no, I know that and that's another that's another whole big issue that the planning board had to you know, so by reducing it all of the not all of them but perhaps in general a whole bunch more that would be non conforming will be conforming at the end of this. And that's just that's also a role. Yeah, I think yeah, the one acre is not specify the acreage. Delete the phrase with a minimum lot size of one acre and just use that same paragraph. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and then go and then go with the discussion with the people in the area and see. Well, I, I'm I'm concerned with the development standard because it says with significant reduction in lot sizes, lot frontages, and setbacks. I have no problem with the lot frontage and the setback, but we're talking about a significant reduction in lot size, we're already looking at one acre. 
no, no, we're we're looking looking at that. Yeah. I'd say as long as the septic works. Yeah, and if it works. Why not? And they can meet the state rule is, I believe, 20,000 square feet, which would be roughly a half an acre for a uh, septic lot. If there was sewer out there, it would be a completely different story. Is but sewer yeah, across the street the there? there? No. no. <laughs> but we don't have it yet. No. But when they come. Well, yeah, but, 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 but that's probably a very long time away. So okay. it really makes sense saying that infrastructure distance from the arterial, we don't have an arterial down there either. Will determine the maximum density right. and type right. of development. So, I think that only takes site, well. condi so, site conditions will yeah. determine the maximum. Okay. Yeah. Like the editor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ironically, I think that paragraph to me doesn't fit in the proposed M5. <laughs> well, when we, when we discuss it, maybe it will. Yeah, probably okay. will. Yes, right. yeah, I was Tell thinking the same thing. That's why when you mentioned four and five together, I was wondering where you were coming from. I'm moving about the four. Okay. When I went home after our last meeting, I emailed Pat and I said, can you help me with this one sentence? I have more erasures than I have words. It's going to be another one of those. Uh, anything else on M4? Nobody erases anymore. It's a delete. <laughs> I know you still have it. You still have your third grade eraser. Right? Yeah. I uh, got a question up here. No, I, I just want to know if, if any of the members of the EDC have comments on the M4 because they did listen to what the public had to say and they did hold a meeting. So I'm not sure if they wanted anyone wanted to jump in and just like I know Jen owns a lot in that zone and it's three quarters of an acre. I think Linda may possibly have the the only lot that would be subdividable or that large in that zone. So I don't know maybe if you had any questions about that feedback or any of the responses they got. Well I, I think it's been decided that you've taken that one acre minimum lot size out of there. Mm -hmm. Which yeah because the most of the lot sizes are, are smaller than that. And and uh, People that we're talking about, you know, a little art gallery or, or anything like exactly. that. I think. But you also, like you say, you also have soil conditions down there. Yeah, but so, there are already most of them are existing. Yeah, that's right. Hmm? You're 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 that's right. That's our last five points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that nineteen point six. Five points a lot. It is actually. It is five points. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. then no, Arundel Star. Yeah. Arundel right. Star. Huh? Call it the Arundel Star. The Arundel Star. <laughs> okay, we'll try that, Mark. Um, um, M5 is the eastern end of Route 111, and, and in the existing comp plan, we have a very large and convoluted, detailed <laughs> description of where this zone is. You know, it's seven paces to the left. And then 100 paces east, yeah, it's really free, and then you jump off a rock and you're out of the zone. So we decided to trash that and just say it goes from the Biddeford line to the western end of the utility corridor. End of story. Where it started many years ago. So that got a lot shorter. Um, M5 district should allow for a mix of small, medium, and large scale retail, office service, and low impact manufacturing <coughs> community uses. Uh, uses that would impact surrounding residential areas that generate significant volumes of traffic may be permitted with conditions. Single and multi family dwellings would be permitted, but new single family subdivisions would be excluded. Now, the reason for some of this, but if you're right by 111 and the new road area, Old Alfred Road, it, it's, it's very very residential. <coughs> However, this zone goes on the north side of Route 111, all the way back to the Biddeford line. Um, that's where the um, the two uh, trailer parks are, but there's quite a, a, a sizable amount of open land there. So some of this you know, larger stuff could potentially go back, so it would be a good distance off the road um, and not impact the residential area that you think of first when you look at that zone. So that's, that's part of the reason for the language in both paragraphs, which I think may be what is bothering you in, in terms of its appropriateness for that area. Um, when we got around to uh, um, the site design would have to reflect the character of the surrounding residential neighborhoods, we decided that if somebody was going to put a big warehouse back there, it would just have to look like a trailer. <laughs> and, and also, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we deal with that. 
point of order to get you some mobile phone. <laughs> yeah. Manufactured home. Manufactured home. Yeah. 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 We, we yeah. moved that. We moved that. It would be politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that, <coughs> I realize that both of those are back there. But when I think of this neighborhood, I do not think of a residential neighborhood. Hmm. Well, on the new road side, it certainly is. Yeah, and honestly, I don't think of the new road. When I get up, I think of 111 and all of the stuff that's there on 111. I don't think of the new road. You didn't say hours on the corner. Yeah. 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 And, yeah, the, and the gas yeah. station. Yeah. And that thing. The whole, within the comprehensive plan originally for community commercial more, um, there was wording in there that allowed once that area and the, some dissension did it mean along Route 111 did it mean the whole the whole residential area as well as that when that became full uh, some people have said that 100 and other people have said well maybe not then it would naturally extend on down 111 is there a reason that we're stopping at well, we have, we have on our agenda a further discussion of what the rest of 111 looks like. Okay. Um, <laughs> I knew there was going to be an issue, but I thought I'd just put it up. All right, so uh, that, okay. that's, that's not, it's not here because we were addressing the current community commercial okay. north. Okay. And we already have extended it a little bit because we got rid of the, you know, seven faces east and then okay, et cetera. Um, so that there's a little more space there. But it's, it's okay. currently a rather large, and again, if you look at the aerial photograph, which we did, uh, an, an awful lot of unused potential area. Um, the other thing here is the, uh, that last sentence, site conditions, infrastructure, and distance from the arterial will determine maximum density and type of development. That was to address two issues. One is that, that open back land that exists on the north side, and also the potential in the next century when the economy gets better of actually having sewer and water come up further and, and service that area, in which case the improved infrastructure would allow for a lot of possibilities there that currently does not exist. Is that also part of the infrastructure? Do you think of it the natural gas? Yeah, well, that's Potential. I'm just uh, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just it's yeah, not not necessarily anything we're going to look at soon. But again, well, they said they're the about free phase wire too, and that's right up there. Now. Yeah. They brought it down there because <laughs> well, and it, but again, yeah, you know, it's an interesting business yeah. in planning. You need to take it into yeah. consideration. But the fact is that now it's there. So. Um. Has the thought been given to what you're going to do beyond the power lines? We, that will be on our, after, our next meeting will probably be just to revisit this and, and clean this up according to our discussion tonight. Uh, and no, then, much. no, not much at all. And then that's good. the next thing on our agenda. We, 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 left off, <laughs> we left off in the middle of an agenda because we stopped after this and it was 9 o'clock when we went home. So we're going to pick up in there. Well, you can have a early. discussion amongst yourselves. As to what you think that should look like. <laughs> not, can you only imagine? Uh, yeah. Can you only imagine? Not really. I can. I live. Yeah. We, we, we've thrown around. We have a consensus that looks enough, pretty nice now. We've thrown around enough ideas to know that we need to discuss it. This might, be, that the, this might be the one district that you'll be leading. Us because we, we haven't really we haven't been well, together at all. We have a little bit, but early, 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 yeah. early on we had yeah. the, we had the goals of in all of the areas to reduce things like setbacks, increase the options for all of the owners, all of the business people in each of the districts, and we had started that. I think for 111, you had that as a task, right? To look at the lots and setbacks. Yeah. So, I mean, it's something that we considered a year and a half ago. Um, so, I'm some not sure how new it is. Some of the, 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 we, we just the potential yeah, there could be, do we want the, the uh, if it crossing type bump to come right up to into our town, or do we want to keep it so there's more residential? Do we want what? these stores in our town? <laughs> 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 yeah, one of those bacon restaurants. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
one, just as we did with these five districts, I, I think it's important that we look at what is there now. All right, and, and with respect to that particular section, 111, um, most of it right now is business because agriculture is a business. And that, that gets overlooked, but it's still a business. So existing use is one thing to take a look at. <clears throat> we also have things like soil conditions to take a look at and the complete lack of any drainage and the flood. It's, it's, a, it's a complex area. It's, it's not a simple thing. It's not very straightforward at all. The, the other point is, and I go back to my comment about <clears throat> zoning by crayon, um, is my feeling is, and this is just me, but I'm going to propose it to the rest of the crew, is we need to look at the residential districts as well. Because if we pulled these five neighborhoods out and said, OK, we're gonna, they're mixed use districts, now, now what, what does that make the rest of the town look like? If you, if you look at the Limerick Road, for example, Limerick Road is in part R1. And we have some very, very large lots there. That's nuts. Um, maybe there's another way to do this and, and make it make sense again for the existing use and for potential. Yeah. What end of Limerick Road are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Well, we pretty much. Sure right. Right. Well, all all there. There. Yeah. Well, because the Limerick Road is your right down where Solo and everything else is. Uh, well, at the very right next to Route One, yes, those are those are small lots, but the middle of it, you know, except at intersections, the Limerick Road is large lots. Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have that as R1. Maybe it does, but I think it's something that we need to take another look at. Um, but when you look at the zoning map in general, and you look at what's really there and the current use, a lot of it doesn't make sense. So let's look at it and see if maybe we can improve on it and make it make more sense. But well, you're looking, you have a lot of agriculture in there. Yeah, those are the three main roads, though, I mean, for traffic, mm -hmm. Route 1, 111. Limerick Road is the, is the big time thing that we'll follow really when, when you get there. It will be your turn, we'll yes. We'll try to do it in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, try to make it, it. we'll try to make it easy for you. So, unless you have questions. Anybody have any comments? The only other thing I noticed from going back to the initial letter from the planning board is that we do need to touch bases on their proposed Eastern Trail Service Center area. Which we haven't reached yet. Actually, that was what Tad said would be M6. Yeah, well, yes, okay. we, 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 we haven't ever we seen that. We haven't ever seen that. That's not the planning board. That's the trail plan. Well, that was in the letter that was given well, to us. So. It might be in the letter, but and, guess and what? It didn't come from us. Floating. He's floating. 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 Floating.
forecast, again, it's that crystal ball thing of what kinds of things are coming out. We're still waiting for a study of what may be the most that. beneficial. Thing. So the there's a lot of that. To drive it too. And the economy, yeah. What is the economy doing, et cetera. Um, but the other parts, not only, not only the financial implications to the town, maintain, maintaining, if you will, one of the big things we've heard from residents and every, every committee that gets formed is maintaining that rural character of Arundel. I think most of the people here like that. I think we all just have different opinions of what that is and where it is. Uh, quite frankly, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just one. So there's the economics, it's maintaining that rural character. Um, for many years, um, the town has been slammed, this board has been slammed for not being business friendly. Um, not providing a lot of the other utility. Well, obviously that's not just the board, but it's all of the residents of Arundel. So hopefully in this planning process, what we can do is bring together the town uh, to look a little bit to the future. What do we want to maintain? Where are those potential areas for growth as seen by the residents that are here now? And do the best we can to get from point A to point B. If it's 10 years, absolutely wonderful. If it's 100 years, at least we're moving towards something. And then the other, the other big thing I think that we've all learned in each of these committees that from the folks that have been here, the best laid plan today is going to be changed the next time we do this next week. Thing because of <laughs> economics, yeah. development, yeah. who did move here first, which came up, First, we allow the grant. resident goes in, the next guy, well, hell, I want to do that too. And then you kind of lose that direction. Um, sometimes we get areas that get overbuilt when they weren't in the areas that were designated to. Um, we don't have a lot of the sophisticated tracking systems to manage all of those things as a small town, so it's kind of understandable. You know, get these in if they meet all of the requirements of the standards. You don't write them 100%. Um, so things come in that may not be there, but the way things that may not have been intended to be there, but they were able to meet the current ordinance, so they're allowed, et cetera. So we learn. It's a constant learning and changing. I'm not trying to put off your answer, but there is no... It's okay. This is the first time I've attended a meeting like Yes, there's no, there's no, there's no easy answer. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just want to say, as a member of the EDC, recognizing both these two groups working on what you've been working on, I feel as a community, even though some things possibly weren't set up right um, to make things grow, if anything, it's needed more awareness throughout town of what we can do and the possibilities of what we can be. And I just want to thank you for dedicating your time because I know it takes a lot of time and it just helps spread the word out there that we need to go in a positive direction. So thank you. Simone, thank you. Just, thank you. you know, going a couple of things time. like, you know, you're, you mentioned about the rural character. Everybody loves the rural character, but it, rural character, if you're from the country, rural character means 10 acres. If you're from New York City, rural acre, half acre lot is is rural character, so that, that can be, depending on if you're coming into town or you've been here a while. Um, my question to the planning board is, you know, we're talking about all of these districts as far as, you know, business districts, whatever. Are you foreseeing any changes in residential, what's allowed in residential areas? We have issues with people coming into the town hall, and I have one across the street that has um, you know, oil trucks, uh, paving trucks in residential areas. Uh, is there going to be any uh, home occupations? I mean, how much are you going to define a home occupation if you allow it in a rural, in, in a residential as opposed, I mean, I can see all these commercial things and we're setting standard for commercial, but are you going to vary anything that you're planning in the residential districts? We've already done that. We said no businesses in residential zone. The best answer to that is, is that that was the type of response. It's a, it's a hot button issue. It is. Right. Because it's already a lot of people, if, if they feel their they're livelihood, they, they stick. Yeah. We allow home businesses, right. and we, we will never intend to, to pull that away. Right, but, but again, like a home business, 
could be yeah, like a hair salon could, yeah, in so, your basement right, as right. opposed to having five diesel trucks warming up in the morning in a residential area. Nobody wants that next like, to arena. And, right. right. Part of the discussion we've had is, is are we talking about an R1, an R2, an R4? How big of, of, a, of a, the zone right. are, are we talking about? In R4 and R5, we may very well say yes, that's acceptable, but in an R1, we may be going, no, I'm, you know, it's, it's a home occupation. You want to be a hairdresser, that's fine. You want to be uh, a, paving a paving company, no, you, know, you can't. That's 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 you have to. We have to look at the specific zones to make that determination. And that's something that, that we'll have to get a lot of information from these fine folks on. You know, where, what are these zones going to look like? Where are they going to be? Well, we already have a lot of that in place. You know, it, it's not a free-for-all as far as home occupation by any means. Oh, no, it, I, and I don't want to imply that it is. But there's discussion about changing uh, R1. <clears throat> Seriously, Tama Lama is an R1. Well, that was, that was part of what set me off a while back was what she wanted to do and had difficulty achieving yeah. when she was sitting at R1, but she had 10 acres. Of it. And, and one of the things perhaps we need to, to consider is not where you are, but how big is the piece of property. So if, if you're sitting at a 50-acre lot, you can do a whole lot of things without annoying your neighbors mm -hmm. that you can't do if you're sitting on a two-acre lot. And again, the business is very much of a rural character business, yeah. exactly. Right. As opposed to a, you know having you know, you know I, I have to refer back to a paving company because we could get complaints about something like that in a residential zone. A couple of you know like hauling truck hauling places, you know, in, in residential zones, and you know I mean that's not rural character when you start parking two, three you know diesel trucks in your backyard. We have it incorporated but, you know, into the into the ordinance. The la at the last approval um, for the size of the home occupation, the number of vehicles where they can be parked. We also incorporated the uh, contractor storage yards now for the bigger ones where trucks and that will have to be behind and to the rear and there have to be adequate screening out front and to the sides. So some of, some of that has been shored up and maybe it needs to end as they mentioned and as we mentioned we haven't looked at the residential areas yet um, but it was our intent from the beginning to do so and as I mentioned to Don if they're going to be looking at we'll follow their lead and have this kind of discussion the way it probably originally was intended and, and some of these businesses about I mean when you start talking about paving businesses and, and a family owned oil business you know, you're going to be hard pressed to push them into a into a commercial zone because they don't need that infrastructure. And if they stay at X certain size, yeah. they can stay to put their. You know, and it's we you know we've been this round a long time ago. That's about, what the contractor yeah. storage yards are all about, and so forth. We've had a lot of. Yeah. And the bottom line is, it it has to pass town vote, yeah. and then I think it it it's weighted more in favor of, of having some... I love the people around it. We're hearing more from the, those who I, I guess my concern, too, is the, um, you know, because I, I, I agree, I, I agree that you don't want to be having to push them out as a family business, but as a, in the residential area, you're also concerned about wells, and you have to take that into consideration with That's, construction yeah. storage yards of oil spills and, you know, uh, food well, storage and things yeah. like that. I have something to say. I was on the planning board about 30 years ago, so a lot of your kids are. <laughs> <laughs> but way back then, a lot of businesses would come in and talk to us planning board members, and they would ask for storage, and we said, no, you have to have your own septic damage material. They would move out and go right to get it to the uh, south or somewhere else. You have to have central storage if you want business to come in this town. That won't cost money, sure, but that's sure, the only sure. way to That was 30 years ago. That's right. And it's still business today, and it's still looking for the same 30 years from now, maybe the same question. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Anybody else have comments? No, I, I have a question for for comprehension uh, board. Um, we, um, again, we need to have this pass town vote. 
And we're, we're making a big change, bigger than than all the other uh, change. We've done incremental changes in the past, mostly. And uh, I've been on this board for a long time. And most <laughs> of the time, it gets voted down. Something offends some enough people. Since this is such a big change, I'm wondering how likely it is that that people are going to accept that that big change. Right? For instance, we're, we're having less setback on Route 1. Right away, people think that's a bad idea. So I, um, maybe it's a great idea. It's a trade-off. You know, we're trading off. You get less, more density, but some restrictions to, uh, that, to make it work with your neighbors. So I'm just wondering what your feelings are on whether this is the right direction, whether you think it will pass town vote. I think not. a lot of it depends on, I think if you, if you're doing something that the vast, and I think this is what we struggle with, with property owner rights. And I think that if you're doing something that is in a property owner's kind of best interest, if you're shrinking their setbacks, mm -hmm. okay, as a property owner, I would look at that as a plus. I think when, when you start getting into the majority of your conflicts is when you get more restricted. That causes... But we're, we're doing a balancing act with less setbacks, but we have not design standards. We've never had that. That's a hot button issue as well. Well, I so think part of it is, is if, if the people that it's affecting want it, want it then you're going to find that the, probably the rest of the town is going to support it. It's when you're doing restrictions and they go to their friends and say, look what they're doing to me as a business. That's when you have an issue. And I don't know that... I, I haven't had enough exposure to anybody in the business districts to see yet because I don't think enough this is rolled out yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've had enough meetings or public hearings about it or even initial meetings to even get their sense of it. And I think that until we do that, I don't even think we have any sense as to what it's going to do. I think a lot of it too is how do you, how do you put it out to them? Yeah. You know? I, I agree with you. And I, and I think the issue is to have a ton of public hearings mm -hmm. and make sure that people yeah, know and it. And a ton of things in the newsletter, a, yeah. a lot of publication, the more you can, and uh, far enough ahead. And I think that's, <coughs> I think that's one of the issues that, that I think has happened over the past is too little goes out too, too late yeah. so that people get it and it's a shock effect and they go, oh my gosh, you know, and they don't have time to, to talk to anybody about it this information gets out there and we're voting on it next month and it's they haven't had a chance to look at it. I've had people I've had somebody come to the polls when we were passing a land use ordinance in November and ask me for a copy of, you know, this land use ordinance as if they're gonna sit there and sit down and start reading before they vote. I think people the longer you can get this out there, you know, and say in November we're going to do this next year, but this is what we're going to do and put it out there in chunks maybe or something or or get it out there not a month before the vote and well, say I think we're how we communicate this. it is going to be the most vital thing. Mm -hmm. how, how do we communicate this to the property owners? How do we communicate this to the business to the businesses themselves? Well I was thinking the same way in which we're going to invite those six or seven people in the D V two zone to come and sit with us and talk with us. <coughs> Do the same thing with the townhouse corner district. Do the same thing with the various areas there. <coughs> this is what we're discussing. And send them an invite and say, come on down. As opposed to stick it in the newspaper. Yeah. Send, send them a happened. formal invitation and come on down. I yeah. Yeah. Send them a formal invitation with a copy of what you're yes. talking about mm -hmm. at that meeting so that they've had a chance to look at it and they've got a little background before they come to the meeting. Linda? Yeah, um, we discussed this a lot being members of the EDC um, because once our marketing and branding study is done and complete, we need to then get everybody on board with it. Um, so we discuss a lot about how we're going to get as many people involved. And, and, and I think with this, obviously we're all shooting for the same thing. All three of these committees are, have one common goal, it sounds like. And I think the best way to get the word out there is to be unified. And between the three committees, we should be able to spread enough word and, and talk to enough people and get enough people involved. You know. I think mm -hmm. that's the key is making sure that we're all oh, unified and sure. that everyone understands, you know, what they're talking about when someone comes up and asks them, you know, and not to brush it off. 
And I'm not sure even the last comp plan, not the one that got passed, but the one that got sent to town meeting, I'm not even sure that, actually I can speak for myself, the planner, the planning board, and the comp plan, many of us, were not on the same page. Yeah, right. Amen. We didn't even, we didn't even agree with some of the things that were in there. And those are the things that ended up getting changed. Thank you. But it, it is also important that we follow through on the communication because every time we oh, go yeah. through this, we're saying, well, we have to communicate, we have to communicate, and then it doesn't happen until the last minute and suddenly there's this barrage and nobody reads it anyway. I think even if you send things out, people don't read it because it's not an immediate thing, and then it is an immediate thing and it's too late. We have to figure out some way, and maybe, you know, it's not my thing, but maybe the social media stuff works, I don't know. But somehow we have to get some buzz going around town that this is happening and <clears throat> participate because it's important. And we have, have two things. <laughs> social media. The social media is a nice appealing idea. However, the danger is going to be the first person who puts out something that's wrong. Yes. yes. Well, Even if it's not intentional. If they just misunderstand something. And yeah. then all of a sudden we're going to have, they're going to not let you have a garden in a rundle. And it just, you know, that we're done. No, no, no it's a discussion and people comment on it. Um, I have to say, I, I manage, I think I'm on my third or fourth Facebook page now. And everybody said the same thing. You know, oh, don't do that. You're going to get all these people making these comments. And they're not, and I, I, there's not that problem. I really don't have problems with any of the sites that people make in false comments or anything like that, and if anything, it, it creates discussion. Unlike anything like a blog, an anonymous blog, forget it. Yeah. People will say anything and be cruel, and, but with Facebook, your name's out there, people aren't just going to throw things out there, and they're going to, but they will get okay. talked back to. I, I, I take your word for that, and I feel encouraged. The other thing I wanted to say in relation to what you were talking about, if, if if we get the people from the various, I'll use the word again, neighborhoods together and say, okay, how, how do you feel about this plan? And they're, they're you know, uniformly happy with it, et cetera. That goes a long way at town meeting because then when, when that discussion comes up, and, and that's probably how it should go, is, is things get discussed in small chunks as opposed to, we have this land use ordinance, we've changed 5,000 things, let's have a vote, yes or no? It's not going to work. But if we do it in small chunks, and then you have the people from that particular neighborhood or who, who are in that category willing to stand up and say, I support this, this makes sense to me, then you don't have that person in the crowd who lives at the other end of town, doesn't know what's going on, and I don't like this because it looks like it's going to damage person X, who they don't even know, because we've seen that happen before. So we, we need to enlist representatives of the various groups who support whatever the changes are to be spokespeople, people who are not on these committees. Mm -hmm. Because then we become a town again as opposed to isolated groups who really don't know what they're talking about. The other word I'd like to throw out is regardless of what ultimately gets recommended for changes, either in the comp plan or the land use ordinance, I think the word common sense should figure very heavily in those things. Because I think that's what a lot of people in town are looking for. They're not looking for more government, but they are looking for common sense. What, what will make the town work better? And if we can couch it in those terms and have it really be common sense, it's saleable. Easy reading. And, and it seems like Last also pages. if you're we're putting this focus, I think certainly in the Conference of Plan Committee, we've talked about it, is the fact that we really need to com uh, create some sort of reverse timeline then for this, for communications. About, okay, so wh when is a final product due to who? And so then how do we walk it back to say, well, how do we then start to do some communication about it? Mm -hmm. So we need to create a comprehensive communication plan as well. If we're really going to get uh, get the behind of Tom's looks really good at that, and she's on the CPC. <laughs> <laughs> she's got it in her head. So what is our timeline? 
Was that what? Yeah. Are, we, are we shooting for yeah, June? That right. seems a little out of reach. Yeah. Yeah. Too short. Sure. Yeah. Can we make it by well, June? I mean, you know. guys might be. Yeah. Yeah. We have to st <laughs> and we have to have meetings next week. <coughs> That's well, only given, five months. In effect, I mean. The game. comprehensive plan, if, if we're doing it in separate pieces, the comprehensive plan has been passed first anyway. Yeah. So, depending upon how far we go with the comprehensive plan, we could conceivably have some parts of it ready for June. But again, as I, my personal feeling is that a lot of it needs a lot of attention. So, the whole thing, no, but maybe having things passed in some logical chunks yeah. will make sense. The phases. The phases. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's a good. Term for this, yes. The difficulty, the difficulty is that for us, for the board, this isn't a few changes. This is a whole new board. So I think the idea of discussion in chunks is, is obviously the way to present it and get the, the audience there. But without a completed, comprehensive plan, and the ordinary, even if they were to Finish it. We might be. We might not be on the same page. We have to change. We may have to make some changes if possible. <laughs> so we can just do it and set it for the voters and change. Well, like I said, if you do it in phases, it will start the process of change along the way. Because because you can't. If you turn around and try to throw the whole snowball into everything, it's going to take us another two years. Per se. If you turn out at least get this going along this way, you're phasing, then you can continue. The, the only problem with that is that the phases have to make sense. Yeah. yeah. And they um, have to be compatible with existing if you don't change. Right. You, you, you can't change bits that, that don't mesh well. So that, that's, that's another little logistical nightmare. And, and I don't, off the top of my head, have a proposal for how to do that. That's not to say there isn't a way, but. Unfortunately, we've, we've been working towards a, a, a full sweeping change that doesn't allow for phases. We're really, we're, we're almost throwing away the ordinance that we have and rewriting it. Actually, if you just took that statement alone for town meeting, yeah. you got to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Approvals of comprehensive plans oh, yeah. like they used yeah. to. Um, How about phasing? There's no longer a state planning office, so the question to that <laughs> theoretically answer yes. to that theoretically yes. Um, in theory, uh -huh. um, statutorily somewhere there's there's a reference to that. Uh, determining who to send it to has been an interesting uh, exercise in futility. Um, so when I know the answer from the state that I've asked several times now. Um, I'll be. I'll get that answer to you as soon as I can. Is there an approval so, by rule? Like there's a permit by rule? It, you know, you all, you're, 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 most of you have been around for the last one, and you used to send it to the state planning yeah. office. They'd yeah. send it back with recommendations, yeah. kind of like you do with DEP and shoreland zoning. Um, and there's a lot of confusion right now as to what happens when all of these growth management plans and these comprehensive plans come up for revision. Who's going to review them? Um, no, I say you just continue on, and if there's nobody here to look at it. We said, it, yeah, thank you very much. Well, it's, it's, it's our plan. It's not there. It's the plan. Right. Well, that's what we did anyway. We said, yes. Yeah. Fine. Ultimately, they used to make recommendations, but as you know here in Arundel, you have to make changes to those recommendations in order to get it accepted by the town. That's one of the things that they left for the communities was the actual final vote. A lot of times they won't do that. Um, and these things were just mandated on the towns and you had a show of hands vote because it was a ceremonial kind of situation. We're looking for those answers right now as to how that whole process is going to play out without the state planning office. Is don't don't no look too hard. Is no. there no way that this could be approached on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis? Like, let's say we got our, all of our ducks in a row on the business zones. Can we write some sort of an ordinance to cover these zones, M1 through M5, get it to the voters next June, and move along to a couple of free residential areas? Because honestly, at the speed we're going, if we're going to do this whole plan, I think we'll be back here about 
2019. We, I thought we were going to be done last year. We, we moved. We moved hard. And, and the, the problem, the problem with that approach is theoretically it's possible because that's how we're setting up the new ordinance that it's done in sections. Mm -hmm. But the problem, if you pass it in sections, then you end up with gaps and conflicts between what the newly passed material and what's existing. And how do you resolve that? That's going to be tricky. Because both are in the ordinance and both would have equal weight. And this one that says you're going to have a reduction, even though it's more, and this one gives you a specific. Well, actually, no. You, you no, can you, get around that. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you base this, and, and John used the word again, on the basis of neighborhoods, it's a geographical location. If, 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 you, if you are within these boundaries, you're in the townhouse corner district these particular properties, then the new section of the comprehensive plan applies to you and the new section of the ordinance applies to you. It Not may, the rest of it. It may be possible, it, the it, way Tad has set it up, it may be possible. We have to really look at it. I, I don't know that it would necessarily work for what might be phase two or three if we went that way, but I agree with you. I think mm -hmm. we could get away with it for these five districts. So the big problem that we would have at that point is defining where, what are the boundaries of well, that district. At what point does it stop? Yeah, we've got and most, they can do that. Can we've got most of them done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 In, in terms of the DB1, DB2, you're right. DB1, DB2, townhouse. Yeah, you may have a lot right in. The, 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 the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think my big concern is by not doing it in phases and waiting for the grant, we've already had seven, seven small agriculture businesses that have not been able to allow to be developed. So that seven businesses that haven't brought more um, business income to your tax burden. So it's just how much longer are we going to wait and say no yeah. to these people? And that's in, in the townhouse district area? Yeah. So we've got to find a way to pass up. I just wanted to mention that another difficulty with that process, as you're aware of, is when you have performance standards that relate to, that's where a lot of the gaps come from and the conflicts, and because it doesn't matter how many times you read these, sometimes you're going to miss that one thing, and that one thing is what gets adopted, and that's the one thing that everybody looks to when they come in and say, you said I couldn't do this, but here it says this. That's where it gets difficult. I think it is is feasible like that, um, but you just got to watch out for the performance standards because you can't project performance standards that yet are yet to exist in any zone. Um, and I, I've seen a lot of ordinances <coughs> where that becomes a problem. I think if this type of an approach were taken, it also gives you some uh, schedule for getting people in here for hearings and town meetings. If we're going to discuss, mm -hmm. first of all, these five districts, these are the people that we want to get in touch with quickly. Try to get meetings scheduled for these districts quickly. Try to wrap this up and, you know, a little bit finished, I think, is a heck of a lot better than having everything at 20% stage. But that, that goes back to the, the whole concept of how do you get an elephant. I think that's one by every time. Because right. otherwise, <laughs> we're going to present something <laughs> like this, and you're going to have something just as big, and we're going to go, okay, vote on this whole thing. Yeah. Now we know nobody's going to read it. Right. Well, well, that's just, another point too. Is it's like the Obamacare package. Nobody read it anyway. That's right. You have to ask them for you to know what's in it. If you do this by sections, the people who, when it comes up for a vote, the people who are going to be voting on it are going to be the people who have an interest in it, who hopefully by that point you've had in here listened and tried to clear up any complaints they have. Um, so I, th I think it's something that the planning board and Tad and Todd yeah. and Dawn need to discuss is, is this, is this you know, do we concentrate on, do we concentrate on the ones that are causing us the most grief? And I think that these are probably the areas that are losing us the most right now. Well, yeah, that, this is, I think, what has the most potential. In, in terms of benefit to the town, and, 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 and let's get something this, can let's get this going, and let's you know schedule the meetings, and, and at least push this part. And if we don't get to some of the rest of it, then let's concentrate on the parts that are most important right now. Makes sense. What's going on? Mr. Chair, any other comments?
These things grow exponentially yeah, they as, do. They, as you go. <laughs> you have this one little thing that takes six months all of a sudden. No. Yeah, sure, but I, I, want, I want to thank for everyone for attending we'll that and uh, for adjourning about two hours early tonight. That's for the benefit of the top committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's 10 o'clock, 4 9 o'clock. So we're doing good. And we stop at 9. We run at 9 o'clock. Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah